So first question is, how does strategy execution software help close the gap? So I think um, the best way to answer that is to say, how does the platform or software in general help us answer the question, how is my strategy going? How am I doing executing my strategy? And that ultimately transposes into three core questions. One is, how good is my plan? So how comprehensive is my plan? What quality is it? Has it gone to the depth of the organization that I expect? Has it covered the breadth of the organization that I expect? The, the second question is, well, against that plan, how am I actually delivering? Am I doing the activity that I said we were doing? Are the deliverables that we're expecting month on month, are they ramping up at the level that we expect? And are we delivering the, the, the content that's required to shift our performance? From that performance perspective, finally, are we moving the needle? Are our outcome measures actually progressing in the way that we respect? And really being able to then drill into the detail that sits behind each of those three questions is where a platform uh, can help with that. Uh, because primarily this is talking about the aggregation and joining up of various sources of information that traditionally sit in disparate spreadsheets, PowerPoints and email narrative across the organisation, often with conflicting views of what's going on. But you can see here that through software such as ours, um, you can have a really concise, clear visualisation of the quality of your plan where is the plan suffering? Where are there missing content? Who do I need to talk to to go and focus on? Are there any patterns of people struggling with flushing out the detail that sits behind some of that plan? From a uh, delivery perspective, we can start to see, okay, well, who is, um, who's doing what? Who's bringing what to the party? Which functions are delivering? Which functions are running late? And, and drill into, well, what is that person saying about that? Uh, as a commentary, uh, as we hold people to account for the deliverables that they said they would do. And then finally, from a, from a metrics perspective, how are we doing? How are we doing against our target? What's the gap? Why is there a gap? Either from just a, a general, very much a roll-up view, or from a more sophisticated view, such as um, what is our delta from our expected versus our actual performance? Why is that? What are we saying about this? What are we talking about every month? What are we learning from the past month's gap between expected and actual performance? And what are we applying to the next month? Which, from an operational perspective, is common sense. But from a strategy execution perspective, traditionally has been very hard to do because of the absence of fact. And what, a, what strategy software is doing from an execution perspective is bringing those facts together to allow those timely decisions to be made uh, against those three core questions of how good is my plan, how good is my delivery, and am I hitting, moving the needle in the way I expect. <laughs> what are some of the different uh, strategy execution models and how do they differ? So you can see an example here of the, the range of uh, strategy execution models that exist, and I'm sure a number of these are familiar to you. Uh, personally, I've used balanced scorecards, OGSM, and Hoshin planning. And the reason they're arranged in this way is kind of my, I suppose, subjective view based on the interactions that we have with our clients about the level of rigor uh, and discipline uh, that these methodologies command. So, so from a, a kind of management by objectives point of view, just having those performance conversations, setting objectives every year, actually evolving that into kind of joining that up with, well, how are we actually going to measure success and how do we make sure that there's an alignment and a cascade of, of those objectives linked to measures. Um, OGSM I've used in the past as well, really building on those measures to kind of form more of some of the top level strategies that are needed to deliver the measures. OKRs, so linked together objectives and key results and with, with some conversation on how we're going to deliver it. And then Hoshin at the end. And, and the main reason I put Hoshin planning at the end is it seems to me from the experience of talking to our clients to be the main um, the main methodology that is forcing and driving and respecting that upfront conversation about what needs to be true for this future performance to be in place, what change needs to happen uh, based on our current performance and our expected performance, what are the improvement initiatives that we need to scope and deliver, and really driving that objective cascade conversation to be a grown-up negotiation uh, between various parties within the organisation and the more the objective cascading conversation sounds and feels like a negotiation, the more likely it is to be successful.